good evening, good evening, good evening. It is a little after nine on a Sunday night, so that means it is time for Poly Talk with Regal Love. I'm Eddie. Tyra. Latonya. And together we create Regal Love. We are a full functioning married black triad who live here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We come here every week with Poly Talk to discuss Polly from the Amherst perspective. In other words, we want to discuss more the love side of Polly than the mini side. But we, um, we believe that the philosophies that we follow are, are universal and they can basically apply to all relationships. We put a lot of energy into trying to create the community that we want. So uh, we do try to be uh, very forward and uh, interactive with uh, the people who trust us with their information and they come and they follow us every week and we definitely appreciate the support. Uh, we are watching our, um, our vision grow and we are watching it take root in different places. Uh, we're being shared a lot and we really appreciate that because uh, the... Uh, the sharing of information is more important than anything else, especially in the fact that we are um, we're fighting uh, backwards to improve the way people look at polyamory because people are always so ready to think the worst of it, uh, think there is some hidden agenda. Um, I, I have I've. I've heard as much as we're basically moving at cult status. So, uh, yeah, we've heard a little bit of everything when it comes to the way uh, the rest of the world looks at polyamory. So we, we, we try to be a little more responsible and come to you guys every week to showcase a different version. Um, uh, as, as we say all the time, it is not to say ours is better. It's just that ours just works for us. Um, if, um, if I may, I want to take a, just, just a couple takes to address a few things. Um, we are a, a black triad, as you can see. Um, we are, for the record, we're not a closed triad. Um, we do, uh, believe in the polyamorous life completely, so we do still date. Uh, we have... We have created this energy. It's going on four years now. Four years of loving, four years of developing, four years of growing. And uh, if, if, if the universe is, is what we believe it to be, then we have so, so, so many more years to continue to develop and grow and learn from and with each other. Um, but in that time, we definitely want to come and we want to share with everyone else because we understand that there are so many other people who are who are actually trying to have this same journey and uh, without the benefit of the resources and or the experience that we have had. Um, I myself am 30 years non-monogamous ethical relationships. In other words, uh, me and cheating never really got along. I was never good at it. I got caught both times. I tried it. It was horrible. Um, so me and Cheetan didn't get along too good. So it made the most sense just to be honest about what I wanted and how I was trying to go about getting it. And I've only been in it about maybe six years now. And Tom, you're? Going on four. Okay. Um, we're, uh, again, we, we, we do the best we can just to bring education, information, and, um, Understanding, because in a lot of cases, uh, trying to be poly is very, very difficult. Uh, tonight, I, I wanted to touch on what I understand is a relatively sensitive subject, especially for men. Tonight, we want to talk about being bi-romantic. And in that bi-romantic uh, energy, how... Uh, Men are expected to handle it, how men in general handle it. And um, 
if allowed, to possibly give some pointers as to how to be a little more comfortable with allowing yourself to even accept that you can be biromantic as a man. Um, we put a lot of responsibilities on the ladies in these relationships because the average man is looking for male, uh, for male, female, female uh, dynamic. So with that being the case, they don't give much consideration for what if another man comes along? Because we uh, inherently we expect our women to uh, understand that we have uh, varied appetites and we, 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 we feel that we may want to explore other types of love, other ways to love people, learn different styles of love from other people. Well, as, as, as I, in, in my history, I've always come to understand that this is a constantly evolving process. So where you may start off this year as this version of this, 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 this couple, this triad, this quad, this tribe, however you choose to uh, put, your, put your dynamic together, uh, it's going to change. More than likely, it's going to change. So before we get into our topic, we got to get into our shout outs. Oh, okay. Well, let's get some shout outs going. <laughs> You got everybody in front I of you. I see Roche Jack out. Webb. Thank you for watching. Aladra. Lachey hey! Martin. Dominique Cunningham. I see the beautiful Latonya. She's in the building. She's in there. I'm going to put my spectacles on so I can see some folks here. Okay. Ron Goodwine Jr. Big fella, what's going on, baby? It is always a pleasure to see you, man. I'm so glad you come back like you do, bro. I mean, for real, for, for uh, all of that, it's really good to see you. We got Dina Singleton watching. Hi, Dina. King Dante Cam. Salute my fellow king. Kim Brown. Hey, Kim. Jasmine Duncan, hello. She says hello, everyone. Hi, Jess. <laughs> we got Alvin Lay, Rainy Woods, Sharnice Cromedy. Yes, yes. I remember them. Hey, what's going on, people? Jennifer Kirkland. Welcome, welcome. I do have a different feed than I do. This is the Regal Love feed. Oh, that's why. Louis Denise Perry. <laughs> <laughs> There's that beautiful Latonya again. Brian Peak. Darrell Gerard. Mm hmm. Oh, du sorry, Darrell Gerard Gaither. I'm not going to touch that. Is oh! That Nikeshi. What's up, Ty? Nikeshi, love me first, Belcher. I, 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 we hope we did that right. Uh, apologies if we didn't. Um, we got Troy Williams, Tyrone Miller. What's going on, brother? Uh, Zion tomorrow. What's going on? Christina Moore. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Hi, Moore. Uh, Tamala Van Crew. Hey, Tam. What's going on, honey? Rashid. Rashid. What's going on, fella? We ran into him uh, a couple weeks ago after we left. left we left the studio. Uh, Rolo Solo. Carlotta Brazil. Good to see you too. Trey, Callie and Honey. I expected to see Callie and Honey. Uh, 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 Tamala. <laughs> Come on, hair. Yeah, you know, they, they, they both working it today. They both working it. Uh, Marlon Boyce, hello, hello. Tila, what's going on, Tila? Trey, I'm watching too. I know That's that me. That's me right there. That's Eddie K. Phoenix. Hi, Eddie. How are you? Farron Walker. T.T. Cobb. Okay. Danielle Jackson. Hey, Danny. What's How up, Diva? Up, oh, Sean Walker. Hey, Mr., Mrs., and Mrs. What's going on, family? <laughs> hey, you. Marlon Royce. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got we got a lot of, a lot of familiar hey, faces and new ones. Yeah, a lot of familiar faces and new ones. Thank you, guys. 
Really appreciate you guys for stopping in with us tonight. Yes, we appreciate each and every one of you. And if we didn't get to your name, we still appreciate you being here. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. There go, there go Shea Bay. What's going on, Shay? You had fun in Vegas, baby. We see you out there shining. Good times, good times. Christina, hi, honey. Mike Knight, hello. Okay. Uh, Jay Shea Thompson, hello. Hello, how are you? Mindy Fields. Hey, Mindy. What's going on, honey? All right, folks. Uh, yeah, we're at Deidre. Hello, Deidre Stokes. Good to see you. Uh, hey, William said, what's up? Okay. Yeah, all right. We, we, get, hey, we, get, Mika. we got a nice influx. Hope you of, had fun on your trip, honey. We had a nice influx of folks here tonight, man, and we really appreciate the support. Um, again, uh, is there was there anything else we need to get to? We need to get to other shout outs. Uh, we want to shout out uwebtv.com for bringing us in uh, every Friday, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on uwebtv.com. Um, shout out to Lucky 2Ks. Always, always <laughs> shout out to the to the, the big fella Lucky 2Ks. Um, we are we're gonna we're gonna. Um, we're going to segue into our topic for tonight. Um, I don't want to get too far sidetracked because everybody knows I'm really, really good to do that. Um, if you watched the show last week, um, you seen me uh, give a give a heavyweight shout out to one of my homeboys, Dietrich Waters, uh, hashtag Jaguar Living. Um, he and the energy of that exchange was kind of what prompted me to actually want to come in this week and speak about being a male and being biromantic. Uh, biromantic as, as from the definition that I subscribe to. Let me say it like that because I don't want nobody to make up their own definition and then hold me to it. So the definition that I subscribe to is being having the, having the capacity to love a man as a man, okay, um, there is absolutely nothing sexual about it. It is just appreciating the next brother for what that brother is and who he is and the kind of energy he carries himself with. Um, as men, we almost automatically find ourselves wanting to compete, wanting to establish ourselves as... Uh, you good? want to establish ourselves as the dominant or the alpha is as as it is is you got it? Mm -hmm. okay now you got it yeah I'm gonna go. okay um establish ourselves as the alphas but uh, the question was asked last week um would i be comfortable with another king leading my queens and my answer was um yes because i understand that these are truly queens, so I don't have to concern myself with them following a clown. So, again, a, another piece of information that kind of lent to this topic tonight. Um, it hasn't happened as of yet on the, the level that I know some of our friends enjoy. Uh, Kimmy J, where you at, honey? I don't want to tell your story without you being here. But uh, Kimmy J is actually involved in a male, female, male uh, triad. And we were, we were discussing it earlier and we were really curious to understand what the dynamic between uh, Doug and Spencer, I, I want to I say it's Spencer, uh, really curious about the dynamic between Doug and Spencer. Um, not to not to not to assume or even allude to that they have any type of uh, intimate physical relationship, but I, I we are speaking of uh, intimate emotional relationship. Kinship. But, yeah, a kinship, a, 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 a brotherhood, a little bit thicker because you share the responsibility of a life. Uh, a rephrase of lives because I'm sure there are children involved and grandchildren involved in this case. So yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, I would like to get uh, more feedback about that. Um, also, uh, another triad that I, I follow because I am just very, very, um, I'm, I'm connected to their energy, the way that they are with each other. And that's Team Genius. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna point out each individual member, but uh, Team Genius, I, I'm a big fan of you guys because you guys really, at the very least, you put yourselves out there that you guys have it right. Um, that the, the gentlemen are gentlemen to their queen and I respect that so much. Um, and, and I guess this is the energy that I'm, I'm speaking about as far as being biromantic. Um, as a man, I can respect the energy and the effort that the other man puts into his woman. And I could look at that and say, you know what? If he had that to offer to one of my wives, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Because I understand he's offering something that, in some cases, I'm not capable of. And I want my wives to have the best of the world. Whatever the world has to offer, I want them to have it. So uh, there are uh, uh, situations that I don't have the expertise and the next man may. And I would love for that man to be able to step in and educate my wives or expose them to some, some things that I may not have the capability of doing to enhance and better their lives. So when they come back and they educate me with that same information, I'm just like, wow, I got to learn something. And it was all at the hands of some other man. Now, I wanna know how many men can get out of their way to allow their woman to have that type of experience. I ask that question because I think it's fair, because we do, and in, in, in by and large, in most cases, we ask a lot. It's a, it's a huge ask that we place on a lot of the females in our lives to accommodate this type of love style for us, but a lot of us are so very, very rigid about accepting, accepting it for them. Fellas, let's talk about it. Um, I, don't, I don't know how the rest of the world looks at it. Um, I have been in, again, I, I've been in this love style 30 years. And this relationship is running on four years strong right now. And it is still growing and it is still evolving. And it is still giving me some, it is still giving me more than I ever anticipated. But I also understand that, excuse me, I also understand that it's in its evolution, I have constantly have to be in a state of flexibility because there will be issues that come up that today I'm not most comfortable with, but tomorrow I may gain a little more insight and I can handle better. So six in one hand, half a dozen the other in that case. But I think, this, I think this is the point I want to get to. If the shoe were on the other foot, how many of you men would be okay with it? That's my question for you guys. Um, I, I, I believe the relationship that I have, that we have cultivated together, I believe that it's strong enough to handle pressure uh, the pressure of somebody else coming in and being a version of a gentleman that I'm not capable of being and can I stand with as much dignity as I look to them to have and accept that um, accept that they love something in somebody else that I can't provide I do not I am not naturally equipped with can I accept that? I would love to just stand up, poke my chest out, say, yes, yes, I can. <laughs> but until I'm actually challenged to do so, I don't know. Um, the relationships that uh, I have been privy to sideline with them with have not developed to the point of um, cohabitation or um, consistent uh, independent date nights, things like that. 
Um, it does happen, and uh, we handle it pretty decent most times. But again, uh, this is why we have come to the understanding that it's always better for us to date couples as opposed to dating individuals. Because uh, one individual may satisfy um, a personal desire, but that doesn't mean that that person is going to be beneficial for the collective. But once you meet a couple, you kind of understand how they love and the way they love. And it makes more sense to you that you can kind of match that up to your own love style to understand, is this something I can get involved with? But um, I had another point I wanted to make, and right now it is completely slid right out of my head. <laughs> well, while he's out of his head. <laughs> This also applies to women. Women also have a biromantic relationship. Um, you know, it's, it's, it might be a relationship where they find they're very good friends as opposed to lovers, where there is no sexual um, aspect to the relationship, but they couldn't see themselves without each other. Mm. You know, they, they go on dates, they hang out, they just sit around and laugh about things <laughs> it's just like like we said earlier it's a kinship um it applies to women as much as it applies to men yeah it's just its own type of relationship um and you know like like he was pointing out that could be difficult for men or women mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but you never know until you face it I, I, I think it bears. I think it bears at the very least looking into. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of the a lot of the comments here. And uh, Marlon Boyce, I respect. I respect your honesty, brother. He says honestly, I couldn't do it. And I can respect that. I can respect that. And I, I promise you, in no way, shape, or form does it make me look at you as if, oh man, he can't handle it. It's not that you can't handle it. It's just that that's not your. It's not your preference. Right. Like you know, we always say, everything's not for everybody. Right, right. I mean, and truth. What sparks what sparks you may not spark the next person. Um, it's funny how between the three of us, we have so different personalities and our energies. Just they they ride different auras, right. but. There's something about the way we come together that creates something different. Yes, it does. Um, I guess in that, this is what I'm speaking on as far as if another king was to show up in our lives and he presented himself in a way that I understood that this was he was not coming for my throne. There's more than enough room for you to sit a throne right next to me, brother. I have no problem with that. Just don't come for my throne. <coughs> So if I understand that, that's not what's happening. I can respect that man for coming in as a king. You know what I mean? That's, that's the way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to respect what's already in place. Right. Now let me understand if I can plug in here to see if I can enhance what we already got going on here. Not replace what's going on here. You better say that again. <laughs> Boy, look. So many... and. I understand how and why people have so many problems because so many people get in and then they make their mind up that they want to change things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I think that's where a lot of the problems come in because instead of you accepting things as is and let's develop it further, you want to change it. It's not a competition, it's an inclusion. Let, yeah, let, let it adapt. Let it adapt as opposed to you instituting change. Let change be the natural evolution that it is. You know, your, your energy will dictate uh, what it is that you're needing. And in most cases, wanting out of your relationship. Uh, and we all have... We all have our own list 
of desires and things that we want and things that we're trying to push for uh, in these relationships. And once again, that whole point, gone. <laughs> But I can't say this. I can't say this. I'm sorry, folks. I, I really lost that train. You've been taking care of me all day. I've been sick. Don't mind him. It's, 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 it's been a rough. It's been a rough uh, 48 hours. It has, but it's okay. We're still here. We're still rocking. Um, I, okay, let, let, me, let me get back to this. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Hamza. The question is about men having the ability be, to be biromantic. Um, and, and I guess for the more masculine of us, the term biromantic is a little off-putting. So maybe I should say uh, for, for, for the more uh, uh, aggressive male type, um, can you respect the next king as a king? Right. Um, I, 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 in no way, shape, or form am I saying that you have to accept him as your king, as a man. Just not a subordinate. Just not a, exactly, exactly. Can you can he be a king of his kingdom and you respect his kingdom? You support his kingdom. He is your ally, and just like we are equally queens. Absolutely. Um, it's called uh, egalitarian polyam polyamorous relationships, and that's when uh, all parties are fair and even. Mm -hmm. Egalitarian. I, I'm sure you'll you'll hear that word uh, again and again and again. So. Just kind of remember the definition. It's when all parties are treated fair and equal, egalitarian polyamory. Um, there is hierarchy polyamory where the core couple is the primary decision makers and the people who kind of uh, dictate the way things go. Um, we don't live like We don't that. subscribe to that. <laughs> uh, again, we live equally. As, as with all things, we respect those that do. Yes. Because there's nothing wrong with it. It's nope. just not our way. That's your love style. There you go. <laughs> um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Ah! <laughs> um... In respecting the next man as a king, are you willing to invest your time and your energy into educating him about your queen? Because he's a new man on the, he's a new man on the block, so there's a lot of information that he doesn't have. So, in the interest of facilitating the love to grow between uh, him and her, would you be willing to share? Insider tips, you know, well, she likes it when you rub her feet, but don't touch her second toe from the last because that bothers her for whatever reason. <laughs> don't ask me what that means, but whatever. Um, would you be willing to share those type of secrets to help uh, uh, build the relationship between them? Because you understand, and, and for me, I would, uh, because I understand that the better she is loved, the less accessible she is to people that are less, less, oh, I hate to say it like this, but I mean it like this, less capable, <laughs> less capable of loving on that level. Um, I feel like, I feel like all the women in my life deserve everything. And I'm talking about from my mama to my daughter and every woman in between. I feel like women, uh, they deserve more than what they get, and I and I'm not I'm not trying to kiss no feminine behind because that's not the way I move. Um, but I was raised by women. Um, my core philosophies have a feminine arc to it, and I can't act like they don't. Uh, my masculinity, my manhood was developed through trial and error in life. But my core understanding did come from a female. So um, I may have a little more empathy for the feminine struggle than the average man can. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say can. Than the average man does. Or, or the average man allows himself to have. 
because in having that empathy, that means you have to you have to acknowledge and deny your male privilege. And we talked about this a long time ago. But in 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 being able to access that part of yourself, you have to take that type of responsibility. Okay, um, I, I, I think I didn't kind of slid off topic already. No, it's all. No, we do. We, we connect. All right, um, and, and please, folks, you have to forgive me. Um, in most cases, I, all of this stuff is is coming from right here. It's coming right off the top. And I mean, every now and then, uh, we do try to put together some talking points or whatever. But uh, life experience can't be uh, dictated and documented as 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 seamlessly as we would like. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 as a rule, I kind of let the universe kind of push me wherever it wants me to go. So that's what I do. But we're, we are trying to stay a little more formatted and stay a little more on task. So uh, the ladies here, are, they're, they're definitely trying to help me do that. And our, and our, our producer, uh, Brett, he's, he's, he's trying to make sure that I don't get too far away from what we're talking about. So... Um, uh, 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 fellas, uh, like I said, I, I, I did see, I did see um, uh, uh, one one gentleman speak on it. Uh, I, I, I think. Oh, uh, matter of fact, here's here's somebody that I know has some firsthand experience. Uh, I know you don't mind me telling your story, brother, because you told it to me, even though you was on a Facebook live. But uh, Hamza Moore, Hamza Moore is actually in a relationship. Uh, uh, long distance, right? Uh, Hamza's in Georgia and his wife is in California and she has a boyfriend in California. Hamza, can I get a thumbs up in the chat if that is accurate? Uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm looking for now. Uh, a thumbs up from Hamza. Um, he, is a, he, is the, he is that type of cat that I'm talking about uh, to trust the next man with his queen, mm -hmm. his most prized possession, his most valued person. And he has to trust another man to take care of her, to be responsible for her. And I know that, that there's no way in the world that that's, that's easy. There, there, there can't not be. not strive to replace him in her eyes. Right, right. He sent his thumbs up. Oh, he did? Okay, my man, that's what I'm talking about. Um, uh, 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 again, uh, I I watched Hamza uh, a month or so ago. I checked him out, man. And I love this guy's energy. But this again, it, it falls right in suit with what we're talking about being being able to be biromantic. Because if Hamza and uh, if we were all in the same space and and that 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 attraction was there and this that and the third, Hamza would be a king that I can respect because I understand his the way his love is driven. His love is not driven from selfish space. It's driven to give more than it's driven more than it's driven to take. And me being that type of man, I respect that, and I have no problem trusting a man who believes like that. So Hamza, I, I give you a big thumbs up, brother, because I believe in men like you, man. I, I I hope that I am a man like you. In real talk, man, you have all my respect and all my love. Real shit. Uh, excuse me. Real talk. We appreciate you. Said you. the boyfriend is in the group also. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. <coughs> but wait, he's he's here tonight, or he's he's, he's in, in Black Poly Nation, or our group, original love group. Oh, our group. Okay. But well, honey, you know we got we got. Oh, we was talking about our group. I don't remember talking about our group at all. But okay. <laughs> I mean, that's where we're at. All right. I assume it's ours. <laughs> okay. So, all right, Hamza. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let me get. Uh, let me get. Let me get. Let's get some. Uh, and I said this before, man. I really got to get with. I, I got to get with you too. You, um, Felix Davis. Shout out to Felix Davis. I, I got to get. That's personal. That's my man. Uh, he is one of those guys that we're talking about here. Uh, I know that he wears his crown. He wears his crown in his sleep. And I respect what him and Nova have, and I know that the love that they have is not limited like that, you know. So, uh, uh, again, he's another one of those cats, man. And um, 
uh, there, there, there are a list of them. I promise you there are, but they're not coming to mind right now. But bus groups. But oh, okay, <laughs> my man. Well, make sure uh, you you could you could drop it in the inbox or whatever, man. Shout this cat out, man, so we, I can establish a direct line with him too. Because again, man, good brothers like y'all, man, it, it it helps to to perpetuate this love style to the positive. Because you break the social norms and you accept love as is, not the way you think it should be. Oh, that excites me so much. I promise oh, so you. That's an example of bi romanticism. Perfect example. Perfect example. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. Um, what, what else we got? Ways to be bi romantic. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to drop a couple examples from the male perspective. Um, well, I, I, actually, I kind of already did as far as uh, giving the inside tips to the things that your queen um, prefers. Would you be willing to share that type of information? Um, would you take on... Would you take on the responsibility of picking up his slack until he learns the curve? To how things work with y'all. Um, again, it's it's human nature to uh, want to establish dominance, to want to be the alpha, to want to be the one in control, the one in charge. That's human nature. But can you can you sidestep that desire to be the one and only, to be uh, to be part of something bigger, something better, something greater? To be in addition to. Had this, oh, I, I thank you, thank you for reminding me. I had this analogy, and I, and I want folks to check this out. This is how I'm looking at polyamory right now. Polyamory is like, you're a house. You, every person is a house. And as your relationships uh, grow and they uh, develop solid foundations and everything, those are additions to you as a house. Now, over time, that first edition, you don't look at it as a first edition anymore. It's just a part of the house. And then the newest edition, it's not a new edition anymore. It's just part of the house. So as the house grows, it becomes more and more livable. It's more user friendly because now there's space to grow in the house. So the more people that you add to the house, it's not taking anything away because every new person adds something new. With new, with every new addition, there's a new addition of what is going on. Every new addition, A D D I T I O N. There's a new addition, E D I T I O N. Yes, I had to explain that because it was important to me. Um, so, I, 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 mm. so it makes the most sense to me that to look at it from that aspect, it kind of makes it easier to accept new people because now you're not looking at them as the replacement. You are looking at them as the addition. They are a new part two. They are not, and instead of, they are in addition to. <sighs> okay, um, well, how, how much time are we in here? Guys, this is a good time to send your questions now because the question and answer session is about to come up. So, you want to send your questions in, please? Thank you. Okay, well, I'm, I'm actually going to take a peek in here tonight. Uh, see some of these questions. Y'all ladies want to start kind of looking and grabbing some of these. Mo Green, I would love to know how to keep the females from being jealous of one another after they both or Did one of them falls in love with you. No, it's up to you. Well, I mean, we, we only been on for 36 minutes. Okay. We can start now. She read it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you hear the question? I w it's for you to answer. Sir. Oh, it is? Um, I'll just read it. 
for for what it's worth, um, there's nothing for either of them to be jealous of. Um, their their connections with me are predicated on each of them. It's not uh, Tom wants something that Ty has, or Ty wants something that Tom has with me. Whatever Ty has with me is what Ty has with me. Whatever Tom has with me is what Tom has with me. It uh, and one thing doesn't rely on or is uh, balanced by the other. Um, jealousy, we understand that jealousy is, for what it's worth, a natural emotion. And you can't help but what you feel. But you are, you are completely responsible with how you behave mm -hmm. with that energy. Um, the threatening and the being disagreeable for the sake of being disagreeable. All of that is so completely unnecessary because at the end of the day, we all just want to be happy. Or at least I thought that was that was the that, that was the goal. That, that that is the goal, right? That's that's the goal. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the goal that we all just want to be happy, then I'm not understanding why that's not what people are more focused on. Uh, j again, jealousy being a natural emotion, you can control your emotions. You're grown. Everybody's always talking about how grown we are, but why are we acting like we can't be grown and have more control over our emotions? I don't. Um, I'm sorry, Mo. I, I don't know how, how long you've been following, but I do kind of get sidetracked, and I kind of, I kind of debate myself in my head a lot. My answer would be the same as his, Mo. So I don't really have a separate answer for you. Tyra, do you have a separate answer he wants to hear from us? That was mm -hmm. my response. Yeah, definitely. I agree. That's how we live, and. That's how it works for us. Mm -hmm. We know how to control our emotions. Oh, wait a minute. What? Uh, uh, Louise Dennis uh, Perry says falls back to being Amara. <laughs> Way to kick that in there. Amara, for those who don't remember, Amara is a mature and responsible adult. Hashtag Mara. Hashtag Mara. Um, <laughs> these are the people that, it, by and large, we're talking about. Um, people who, uh, and, and to Mo, to, to kind of piggyback off the answer to you, um, when you allow yourself to operate out of that energy of being a mature and a responsible adult, you check your own jealousy. Right. Um, you understand that, wait a minute, this person is not better than me. This person is not greater than me. This person does not hold any advantage over me. And if it bothers you that much, have a conversation about it. Yeah. To, Come to, to a solution together. To square away whatever it is that you are harboring to the negative. Right. Um, let's see here. Okay. Get them. Uh, King Dante Cam, will you guys be having a topic on finances with a poly relationship structure? Uh, King Dante, that is not our forte, brother. Well, I'm sure if we do some research, we could probably come up with something on that topic. Yeah, I, I, I do understand that there are um, other other uh, triads, and actually, um, uh, more than a triad. I, I want to say there's a it's a quad uh, operating out of Tennessee, and they do speak more about uh, wealth building and uh, investing in the core family to uh, create opportunities to grow from the inside out. Uh, I, I do apologize off the top of my head, I cannot remember their names to get you that information. But um, King Dante Cam, I will make sure that I remember this and next time I run across their information, I promise I'll shoot it right to you because uh, they are very informative um, again, that's not my personal wave, so I don't follow them as succinctly as I do some other, some other people. But what we can speak on is it works for us. Right. We, we each take care of our part, and as a whole, we are comfortable. Yeah, we should be able to uh, 
come up with something on that topic in the yeah. future. I mean, I, I, I don't. I didn't want to be, you know, irresponsible and just give them the basic, you know, hey, we take care of each other the way we're supposed to take care of each other. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm sure he was looking for, you know, more or less the kind of insight that we give on, on, you know, the Amherst perspective. He was kind of looking for that from the financial side. <laughs> at least that's the way I took that. Uh, King Don, uh, 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 King Dante, we'll, we'll definitely get get with you on that, brother. Um, uh, we got any more questions filtering through? Uh, I, listen, folks, um, I, and I and I, I, I want to give a personal um, version of an apology. I don't know if I'm dealing with this lunar uh, energy or whatnot, but my energy is just kind of bouncing all over the place. So I know I don't, I don't, I don't feel I'm translating as as well as I would like to tonight. So I'm, I'm just going to ask for uh, the slightest version of a pass because if I'm not being as effective with my communication tonight, I am really. I'm I'm in a, I'm in a big state of flux right now, and I, and I apologize to everybody. I, I really spent most of the day trying to bring myself to an even center, but I haven't been able to get there. And I'm really feeling like it has more to do with this lunar energy that um, I, I, I personally feel like I'm being bombarded by right now. But um, uh, I, I promise you, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to do better. Any other questions, gentlemen, on the bi relationship bromance, as one of you said in the okay. topics? Okay, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Romance. Romance. Okay, I guess I guess that is apropos. Uh, uh, let me. Can I back up a little bit? Because I say Hamza has said something. Uh, Hamza said it's sort of like uh, your brother's keeper. Being an alpha is still a partnership, not controlling. Alpha is a state of being. A true alpha understands that. Okay, Hamza. Okay, Hamza. Put put the words to it and make it true. Put the words to it and make it true. I appreciate you, bro. But see, this is what I'm talking about. Um, those strong uh, those strong kings who lead uh, when there's a need to lead. You know what I mean? He, 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 uh, uh, and he's been watching, and I'm a fan of him. I am a fan of Hamza Moore. I am. Uh, and he watches every week, and it's like he never tries to overtake. And I'm sure he has some, he has some uh, experience, experiences that I don't have. And he has some insight and, 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 and a perspective that could really lead <coughs> to a lot of conversations. But him understanding that, you know what, this is this king's space. I'm allowed this king to have this space. But he interacts and he gives and he shares and I appreciate him for that. Shout out to shout out to Hamza Moore. And uh, there, there's man, there's a, there's a few. Uh, Marquise uh, Marquise Muhammad. That's another one right there. You, you find anything? Uh, let's see. I seen something from Tyrone Miller. Do, I, and I can't see it on mine. Do you? I just seen it. On yours. Mm -hmm. No, look a little further down. I'm sorry. Tony, you see it? Mm -hmm. no, Ty Tyrone Miller says something like that's me. Okay. Okay. All right. I got it. I got it. All right. I, that, yeah. He was agreeing with being able to respect another king. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, I'm, I'm just trying to play catch up with some of these comments and everything in here. Um, Again, I, I really feel like I, 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 I touched on something important and I, I personally believe that it's, it's worth taking some time to think about and, uh, and, and fellas, uh, give yourself some, some space to operate in that thought process. Um, Marquis says, what do you do if you feel a sense of competition from the brother? Mm -hmm. Difficult conversation. Yeah, and I, I don't know if that has to be a difficult conversation. It, it's definitely worth talking about Hard because yeah, it's, it's definitely worth talking about because it very well may be. Now, this is this is another one of those difficult positions to to accept. You projecting, mm -hmm. 
and so I meant hard conversation yeah. because it might just be that you're feeling that way, but it might not necessarily be that. It might not be that that's not that that's their intention at all. Right, right. Um, <laughs> so for you, it's a hard conversation because you're feeling that way. Sometimes, sometimes we allow ourselves to uh, overthink. Right. And we overthink to the point where we think that we can talk for the person in the argument that we have in our head. So then we address the other person with that <laughs> energy as if that argument really happened. It's projected. Because your imagination took over. Yeah, right. Your imagination filled in whatever blanks were there. <laughs> and in that case, that would be the other person in the topic altogether. <laughs> You had an imaginary argument, and then you see them, and you're like, hey. Right. <laughs> Hans Moore says you have to talk. You've got to talk to him and get to the bottom of what's up. Sometimes it's a reaction to your energy. Mm -hmm. um, Marquis says because his ego, ego exists at all times. Okay. Yes. All right. Listen to them King speak. Definitely agree with that. Listen to them King speak. I love it. I love <laughs> it. For real. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, and thank you. Uh, is that uh, Erica Rowland? She's in the building. I know we done with shout outs, but that's my people. Can you give insight on converting from monogamous to poly? That was our topic last week. Well, not really. It was coming out. That was it was coming out, but pretty much to it. But I mean, you can answer if you want to, but that's not the topic tonight. <laughs> um. Well, K Love to to because I'm I'm gonna jump on the back end of your question here when your spouse is not interested um, yeah you have to make a choice yeah. and uh, it, it's it's a very it's a very unfortunate choice you have to choose a love style or you have to choose your partner right uh, because if your partner is not, not willing to plug into this love style then it's, it's not it, 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 yeah by and large you're not going to have it um, <laughs> and I, and I promise you I'm not making light of your situation uh, because I myself have been in that position where uh, the person I was in a relationship with, I have been poly to my core, my as far as I as far as I understand my entire existence. But I've allowed myself to live in monogamous relationships and accept monogamous relationships, understanding how 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 much I limited myself to confine myself to a monogamous relationship. And as a woman. I can personally speak on that I would have been open to that kind of relationship if it would have been expressed to me. Mm. But instead, the person decided they were going to go step out because they thought that was the only way they could do things. See what happens? You have a Now they're on the outside looking in. <laughs> Stop it. Ah! <laughs> Hey, Listen, what did I say? Uh, 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 <laughs> love style. A simple conversation can change everything. Everything. Um, the simple conversation that Ty and I had, uh, like, so early in our relationship, I don't even know if we technically can say we were in a relationship. Um, the, conversation, <laughs> we <want> <laughs> the conversation we had early on was, okay, I think I want to, I, I think I want to, be involved with more than one person. Are you okay with that? Yep. Uh, and I got the real plain and simple, hey, if you can promise me you won't try to replace me, we good. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it was a little more involved than that, but I'm just giving you a, a brief version. But all it took was proper communication. One conversation. And we ended up... Sorry, with, that's my favorite word, y'all. It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> It's my favorite aspect. I believe there are three pillars to any relationship, and that is communication, trust, and inclusion. Yes, yes. Um, check out the blog; it's on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> check that. Check that blog out. That blog is kind of hot too. Um, Marquise Muhammad asks, "King, have y'all tried to bring another king on board?" Um, in the grand scheme of things, yes, yes, we have. Um, within another couple. Yes, so yeah, we yeah, a king definitely and a queen within, in. definitely within that, that dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if uh, well, no, I can I, I can say that. 
a single male hasn't sparked the both of them to the point where they're like, you know what? Yeah, let's slap him on. Um, uh, she's had her interest, she's had her interest, but nobody that, nobody that had clicked all the way around. There you go. Best way to put that. Best <laughs> way to put that there. <laughs> That's why we date couples. Right. That's a, right. Good point. Though. Right. That's why we date couples. Biggest reason we date <laughs> couples. Um, hey, Deanna. Deanna Marie Goins. That's, our, that's one of our favorite cooks right there. Uh, monogamy seems a bit unnatural for me. I can be, but there has to be some concessions. For example, the lifestyle. Overstood, honey. Yeah. Overstood. Um, okay. Uh, Andrea Gibson. All right. Tell Will I said what's happening, man. I'm still waiting for that cat to call me. Um, okay. Um, I, I don't know if there's any more questions coming up. I haven't seen anything as of yet. But I, def I definitely want to touch on this. Uh, again, I want to gloss over this. Um, tonight we have definitely been putting more of the focus on the gentleman. Um, I, I, y'all, you guys hear me say this all the time. I absolutely believe that it is the men's responsibility to take in a, an active role of leadership in their relationships. If that is too heavy for a lot of the, uh, the strong independent women that are watching, I apologize for, for, for offending your, your sensibilities, but it is exactly how I believe. Uh, and, and I'm watching uh, uh, brothers like Hamza and Marquise and Felix and Dev, Dev White, uh, uh, owner of uh, Black Pollination. I'm watching people like that step up and really show that men have nothing to be afraid of from another man. Um, I, made a, I made a personal choice that I was no longer going to actively not speak to another brother walking down the street. You know how we just kind of automatically, we see another brother walking down the street, we almost automatically just put the cold face on. And you might get a little head nod or something like that. I promised myself that I was not going to do that anymore. I am actively going to speak to every brother I bypass because you never know. You never know. You know what I'm saying? You might, you might just speak to somebody and it changes the way they have an outlook about the whole day just because you said something nice to them. Mm -hmm. And it don't cost you nothing. The worst thing that can happen is they can give you an attitude. They give you an attitude, let them go with it because you tried to give good. Don't, don't never accept bad for good. If you gave good, let good be out there and you keep going. And it's, don't stop and entertain the attitude. Right. Just move Skip on. that. You, you, <laughs> only thing you try to do is be a good person. You know, and if, and that's, and if you understand your motivations are proper, then don't worry about the rest of it. Uh, but again, that 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 was a personal thing for me. I really just uh, and I, I and uh, we were talking about uh, different ways to build that bromance or biro uh, biromantic uh, energies. Uh, as far as men go, uh, that's a way right there. Uh, let the next man know that you don't view him as a problem, <clears throat> and that's just by speaking pleasantly to him when you walk by. Hamza Moore. Just wanted to add, for the kings that may have another king added to the dynamic, <clears throat> don't get so caught up in just trying to outdo each other that y'all mm. ignore the queens. Okay. Their input is key to both kings gelling and understanding how to make things work. See, man. Good point. Boy. Good point and a great point for us to end on. Make sure y'all watch us on UWeb TV Fridays at 9 p.m. Yeah. Shout out to Black Poly Nation. Make sure y'all follow that group. Uh, we're going to the conference. Uh, be a part of the conference in May, uh, Memorial Day weekend. We're looking forward to it. We also have our Poly Talk Live audience coming up April 14th uh, here in Pittsburgh, PA. We hope you, most of you can join us. Yes, You can please. get here for the live audience uh, production. Um, also follow us at on Facebook, Regal Love. Twitter, Regal Love 3. And Instagram, regal.love.33. Regal Make sure okay. you follow us on all of those. So, thank you all for coming in tonight. And don't forget our blog. Uh, do you want to say the blog? <laughs> yeah, regal Love 3. 
dot home dot blog. Okay. Check out our blog. All Close right. Us out, Mark well, folks, we, we, we definitely appreciate all the energy you guys put out. Uh, again, we did start in here on the fellas. So, uh, fellas, I appreciate all the interaction that you guys gave tonight. It is not our usual for the men to kind of step up, but tonight the, the, the gentlemen definitely stepped up, and I appreciate, we appreciate all of you guys uh, for allowing yourselves to uh, speak your truths, be vulnerable to whatever degree you are. Uh, but we are going to go ahead. We're going to sign out tonight. We are Regal Love. We love you and we mean it. I'm Eddie. Tyra. Latonya. And we wish you all the love we'd want for ourselves. Good night. Good night. Good night.